Welcome back to a new creepy news video. Today I wanted to share with you the case of Arliss Perry and was unsolved for four decades and in 2018 they finally figured out who was responsible for the brutal murder of this young woman. She was 19 years old at the time. Now on the wiki they said the following about it. Artist Perry was a 19-year-old newlywed murdered inside Stanford Memorial Church in Stanford, California, within the grounds of the university, on October 12, 1974. The murder went unsolved for more than 40 years, so today we'll go over the details about this case. Now, Artist grew up in Bismarck, North Dakota, where she and Bruce Perry were high school sweethearts. The pair married in August 1974, and Artis moved to Stanford University with her husband, who was a sophomore pre-med student. At the time of her murder, she had been working as a receptionist at a local law firm. Around 11.30 p.m. the night of October 12, 1974, the Perrys had an argument about their car's tire pressure. Artis told her husband she wanted to pray alone inside the church, and they parted ways. Bruce became concerned when his wife hadn't returned home by 3 a.m. He called the Stanford police and reported her missing. Officers from the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Office went to the church and reported all the outer doors were locked. Campus security guard Stephen Crawford, a former Stanford police officer, found her body around 5.45 a.m. on October 13th in the church east transept near the altar. She was found face up an ice pick was sticking out of the back of her head, though the handle had broken off and was missing. There was also signs of strangulation. Police noted she was naked from the waist down. A three foot long altar candle was in her vagina and another between her breasts. Crawford told police he'd locked up the church a little after midnight. He rechecked the doors around 2 a.m. and found they were still locked. When he visited the church at 5.45 a.m. to open it for the day, he said he found the west side door open. It had been forced from the inside. Investigators found semen on a kneeling pillow near Perry's body. They also found a palm print on a candle. Neither the semen nor the print matched Bruce Perry or Crawford. The Santa Clara County Sheriff also ruled out any links between Arda's murder and three previous killings dating back to February 1973. Bruce was an initial suspect but was eventually ruled out. Now this happens a lot of times with cases where you know if a woman is married to someone always the husband is the first you know suspect in such cases sadly it does happen where people get into such heated arguments that they actually kill their significant other but you'll see that this wasn't the case with artist perry oh no it is actually so bizarre to realize what's about to happen here just remember this this guy stephen crawford the security guard because he ended up being the actual perpetrator even though they tried to test the semen and palm print they couldn't match him with it but decades later they ended up doing it still now at least seven people were in the church during the night of october 12th and the morning of october 13th among them were artists and crawford four other people were identified a seventh was not a passerby noted this young man was about to enter the church around midnight he had sandy colored hair and wasn't wearing a watch was of medium build and stood about 5 foot 10. The case remained open and active for many years and was never officially closed nor treated as a cold case, according to the Santa Clara County Sheriff's Department. In 2018, here we go, Crawford was definitively linked to the murder following a more advanced DNA test. On June 28th, as police arrived at his residence with a search warrant, he committed suicide by gunshot before he could be arrested. This guy was such a coward. I, I mean, the, the fact that he killed someone is absolutely atrocious, but I, I find it even more almost disgusting and disrespectful to the family members that a perpetrator would even take their own life when they're finally caught, you know? It's like they can never tell the police why they did it, what was their motive. The family member could never get proper closure by the perpetrator in question because he took it with him to the grave. It's an absolutely disgusting move all over again. Let alone the murder of this 19 year old girl that he was responsible for. Now what happened during their visit to his home? Well, on a different website, they shared with us the following. According to a statement released by the San Jose Police Department, 
During the execution of the search warrant, sheriff's deputies made verbal contact at a closed front door with an occupant in the apartment. As deputies made entry, they observed an adult male with a handgun and the deputies immediately backed away. A short time later, a gunshot was heard. No deputies discharged their weapons. They eventually entered the residence and discovered an adult male with an apparent self-inflicted gunshot wound. The male was pronounced deceased at the scene. No one else was present or injured. So that's pathetic. I mean, the good thing is that they figured out who was responsible. That show how much of a coward he was. Decades later, he still panicked and took his own life because he was afraid of getting the justice he actually deserved to get for taking this young woman's life. So I'm mostly just happy for the family members in question that at least they know what truly happened to this young woman decades ago. That's the least that they deserve because they'll never get their daughter back. And like we always say, we hope the victim is resting in peace. And in a way, well, at least the perpetrator is gone from the earth. I mean, he can't testify why he did it, he can't explain it. He can't get this justice he deserves by being arrested and thrown into prison or maybe received the death penalty, who knows, right? That's the sad part about this case. At least the difference is that the case was solved even decades later. So there's always hope for these cases, but sometimes it's a little harder to hold on to hope if there's too little evidence to work with. Now, if you're new to this channel, consider subscribing to receive videos about unsolved cases and other creepy things, both real and fictional, on a regular basis. And with that being said, dear viewer, have sweet dreams.